we just worship you. We just praise you. God, you are so awesome. You are so powerful. And you're the only one who can do these things that this song is talking about, God. God, we need more of you. God, we desire more of you. God, this morning, we are laying everything at your feet. And we want to know you more. We want to desire you more. We want to seek you more, Father God. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know.
God, it is so awesome that you see us where we're at, that you see us where we are. And you find us, God, even though we feel like we're lost in this, this big, dark world and that maybe our prayers don't matter. But God, you see us, you hear us, and you come to our rescue every single time. We love you for that. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
How many know Jesus said, turn my house into a house of merchandise? But what did he say his house was supposed to be? A house of what? Prayer. Prayer. The Bible says, is any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. We're to anoint them and pray over them. And then it says, and the prayer of faith might save the sick. No, No, that's right. We'll save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. That sounds like body, mind, and spirit. The whole person. Amen? Amen. He's still in the healing business. We've seen many miracles right here. Many people healed, delivered, set free. The greatest miracle is when people come to Christ, give their heart to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Only by his grace. Listen, we're going to let you come up. If you need prayed for, hey, line up right here, and we're going to do what we've always done, and he's going to do what he's always done. Meet us right where we are. Amen? Amen? As your faith is, be it unto you. Come forward and let's let's pray for needs as David and the and the group continues to worship. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We want to help. Come forward. Got some brave girls. Why is it the females are always first? How many know Mary knew before Joseph? Oh, okay. God gave us these ladies for a reason. They have a special connection. Amen, guys. We need to listen. Come on. How about you brave men? Come on. He didn't, not telling me. Listen, I'd be up here right now, except for I'm already up here because, John, I know I need his help every day. Come on. Any of you guys. Come on. Be the first brave one. There you go. Come on. Come on, Steve. See, I know you're sitting out there. I can point some of you out right now. Come forward. Listen. Godly men, strong men, still follow it. And they're still not afraid, John, to cry. You hear me? I see tears in his eyes. Come on. Come on. I know you're dealing with junk. Come on. I'm waiting for the rest of you. Every one of you should be up here. Our God is faithful. He's faithful. Brother Michael, I'm going to need your help, brother. Come on, spread out, spread out, spread out, spread out, spread out. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise i 
done for us by sending your son Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins and loving us enough to go to the cross and die for every single one God amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy That bob with blood wholeheartedly, my soul undeserving. Let's sing that again, church. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy. That bob with blood. to God. Keep my heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's faithful. God's faithful. God's faithful. Amen. He's still healing, delivering, and set free. Praise his name. Praise his name. I explained it very clearly, and they wanted to repent, turn their life to Christ. And it's not just about praying some little candy prayer. It's about giving my life to him. Amen. Amen. And realizing you're bought with a price. Amen. And from this moment on, John, you live for him. 
If Jesus is your Lord, Dylan, that doesn't mean you get up every day and say, what does Rick want to do today? What does it mean you get up and say, what does he want me to do today? Amen? If we will live that way, we'll find his deliverance through obedience. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's give him a clap. Come on. Praise his name. Praise his name. Love you guys. Now, don't you leave till I give you some material, all right? Great. Get everyone to stand back up as we worship. We're going to start this song over again. And I think it's such an awesome song because it talks about what he did for us and how we can sing, God, you're so good to us for doing what you've done for us. Amen. love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with love wholeheartedly my soul undeserving sing it out let's do it again amazing love that welcomes the kindness of mercy that bar with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving oh God your soul good sing it out church God
you're so great, you're so awesome, you're so good to us. More than we could ever ask for, God. So I told you last week, I picked a bunch of my favorite songs. And I tell you what, it's hard to sing some of these right now. Because what he has done for me and what he has done for you. And we've seen what he has done for three right there this morning, man. And one of the songs I, I talked about in a sermon months back, is one of the songs that really taught me to get into worship with God and find that quiet place with Him. And it was this old song that we sang way back in youth group, and it's, You're Worthy of My Praise. And we're gonna start off in the chorus, and it says, I'll give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. So as we sing this song, as we let go and we let God, just give it all to him this morning. Whatever you're holding back, just give it to him. Lay it at his feet. Say, God, I want more of you. I would desire more of you. This thing is holding me back, but I don't want it to hold me back no more. I want full amount of you, full of, you know, feeling your love, feeling your power, feeling your my everyday walk. And it starts with that quiet place of singing praise and worship to him on a daily basis and spending time with God. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. i 
How many can feel the spirit here today? Praise the Lord. Pastor Dave and them normally do six songs. They just did eight, and they did a few of them several times, and uh, I could tell they were getting hoarse. No, and I say that to say bless them. They stretched it today, as we all need to. Let me give you one little teeny mini word of advice. I'm saying this because, listen, I've led many people to Jesus, and I'm not bragging. I'm saying that. Isn't that what we're supposed to do in that company policy? Yeah. 
Amen? Let me tell you something the Lord changed in my heart one day. And it changed the way I affected people. I realized something. The Holy Spirit's not a gentleman. That's a lie. The church has believed. He's not a gentleman. Listen. Not in the way we understand. How many know the Bible says that God, who is the Holy Spirit? God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. We need to flow in him. Well, the Bible says we're to sanctify ourselves in the Lord and then get ready for anybody that might ask. Pastor, we don't want to be pushy. Lie from the pit of hell. If you knew your kid was going to die when he took that corner, would you grab him? Would you scream? Would you do anything it takes to get his attention? Amen? Spurgeon says, shame on us if we don't have scars over our backs as the people jump over us into hell. Listen, do not think. Do not think that we're supposed to be scared to present the gospel to people. They might die in a moment. Philip, did he wait for the Ethiopian to start the... What are, you, what are you reading there, buddy? And he began to explain. Amen? And then in just a short time, baptized. Uh, Jesus started the conference. Samaritan woman, uh, right? Follow me. How many times did he start it? Follow me. You hear what I'm saying? Do not let the enemy tell you that the, the, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman and that he's weak and he don't want to bother people. How many know, you've heard me say it, love them enough to bother them. Because tomorrow they might be dead. Don't be afraid. I was driving home one day from church, crying out to God, Lord, help me, God. Because often we want to help, but we won't even talk to our neighbors. And I went to pull into my driveway and I looked in the mirror and by God's grace, I saw every home around me on fire. And the Holy Spirit said, Rick, if those houses were burning, what would you do? I'd run to those homes. They are. And Molly knows, Molly, what's one of my goals? To win every neighbor around me. Because he that wins his soul is his wife. Amen? It's an attitude. Don't be a gentleman in that way. Love them enough to bug them. Yes, we've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about being rude and mean. Please don't misunderstand me. But love them enough to bug them. They'll thank you for it for all eternity. You hear me? Did you understand what I'm saying? Listen, go out and spread the word of God and quit using the excuse of not being pushy. You hear me? Now, welcome Pastor David as he comes one last time to speak to the crowd. Well, it's not going to be the last time. I, you know, I'm going to do it everywhere I go. Yes. So, so and I'm a loud mouth. I like to talk. Uh, people at my old job would say, you really like to fellowship, don't you? Because I see you fellowshipping over here. see you fellowshipping over here. see you fellowshipping over there. I like to talk to people. Just how it is. And sometimes I don't like to talk to people. My wife covers that part. When I don't like to talk to them, she talks to them. So we, we, make, we balance each other out on that aspect. But hey, good morning. good morning. I'm glad to see almost all of our chairs full this morning. This is awesome. This is awesome. All right. I don't have any announcements, really. So what do I do? I'm doing offering. Let's do offering. We're going to give you the opportunity to give one last time for new beginnings. It's not one last time. If you want to continue to give, Pastor Rick is going to continue to ministry. And you can give online. That's going to be keep going and, and going on that. So I thought it's right there. See that? There we go. You can keep giving. We're going to be keep, keeping that going to help fund our missionaries. We're going to keep giving if, if we can keep giving in that aspect. Uh, and then wherever the money can be used for for ministry, it's still going to go reach the lost for Christ. Amen? You want to pray?
Amen. All right, just a few announcements, and there's only one announcement. There is no kids' church today because we're keeping everybody in here together as one big happy family. Pastor Rick's going to share a small word, and then I think you're going to give them opportunity to come up and share, right? Oh, he might do the opposite, so it's anything could happen Sunday, I guess. So, yes. Uh, but we're going to fellowship a little bit here. Five minutes. We've got to do the fellowship, right? Get some of Danielle cinnamon rolls. Danielle made cinnamon rolls. They were, I haven't got one yet, but you know what? Danielle lived next door to me. She rented one of my house next door, and I tell you what, when she made cinnamon rolls, it was awesome. It was, she makes the best cinnamon rolls. Hey, Michael, we don't have the clock. It keeps going bye-bye. We need that. I love you. I Thanks love so you. God's so faithful. I need the clock because I don't know what time it is.
But y'all, I love that this church loves the fellowship. One of the things you're probably not going to see at the next church, if you would, grab your seats. Grab your seats. Grab your seats. 25 seconds. One of the things you're going to probably not see at the next church is this little break. Come on, Robert. Come on, Betty. Come on, John. Let's get our seats. I love the fact that this church loves the fellowship. Sometimes, though, getting everybody sitting back down is like herding a bunch of snakes. <laughs> I say that in a loving way. Come on, Michael. Come on, Robert. I love you. I love you. God is so faithful. One of the things that you guys all need to do, Lori and Ron and John and Samuel and Jessica and all of you, make sure if you don't have other people's info, contact information, that you get it, okay? I've had people come to me over the last few weeks and say, Pastor, I, got, I can't believe you're, you know, uh, and I'm like, I'm not leaving. It's okay. That's why I'm talking, so we'll get seated. Everybody's trying to get coffee and donuts. Danielle blessed us. She made a bunch of, 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 of cinnamon rolls, and this is the worst day to start Atkins. I love cinnamon rolls. Huh? No. I told you I was doing it, and I'm going to keep my word. I know you don't care, but I care. No, I... Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> we got a deal, her and I. We're, we're trying to lose 10, 15 pounds between now and the holidays. Why is it the Lord always convicts me about being too fat right before the holidays start? <laughs> All right, come on, y'all. Father, thank you once again, Lord, for being in this group. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a word, a quick word to speak. And Lord, I just pray you help me to speak that word and help us to receive it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So listen, I'm only going to basically take probably 10 minutes. I'm going to allow some time for some of you to come and share about, listen, about how the Lord God has blessed you through this group. Amen? There have been so many blessings. If, if we just took just couple minutes of peace, it would take us all day. Amen. God's been so faithful. God's been so faithful. I want to share with you, some of you that maybe don't know how it all started. I guess to be fair, about 2000, 2001, I was living out in Florida. I had 80 men working for me and I was building an $8 million project and I was a horrible, rotten sinner. I say that because the Lord, by his grace, saved me, even though I knew that I deserved hell. I knew it. See, I, there's many people I talk to, they don't feel like they're bad people at all. I knew in my heart I was a bad person. I stepped on anybody I needed to to get what I needed in life. I had been raised in a Christian home, but for 20 years, I turned my back on God. And how many know if we do that, he'll give us over. And we can get what we want at times. You hear what I'm saying? Nikki, I should have went to hell. I deserved hell. And like Paul, I look back and I, and I declare that I was the chief of sinners. I'm not looking back and wanting to go back. And I'm not living condemned. I am grateful. I love much because I've been forgiven much. I know what I deserved. One day, I was sitting on a couch... Literally sitting in my chones trying to find something smutty to watch on TV. Living in Florida on a Saturday. I'm flipping through the channels, Dylan, and all of a sudden John Hagee's talking. And he starts talking about peace with God. And I'll never forget. It hit me like a lightning bolt. 
as I knew in my heart when I laid my head on the pillow, I was not at peace with God. I wasn't at peace in my family. I wasn't at peace. Amen. And all I said was, Lord God, I don't even know what that is. But if you'll help me find it, I give you my word. And one thing this old rotten sinner does is I keep my word. My mom and dad taught me to keep my word. I was a word. My word was my bond because that's how I was raised. And I said, Lord, you know I'm a rotten sinner, but I give you my word. I will live for you from this day forward if you'll help me find peace. And something changed in me that day. Something changed. I, I called my ex-wife and I said, I think, I think I made a commitment to Christ today. And she literally laughed on the phone. That's not picking on my ex. She just knew who I was. Huh, okay. God began to stumble me forward. That's what I tell people. Man, you know, many of you think that the moment Jesus comes into your heart, you're just going to be perfect. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. Don't get me wrong. You are perfect in spirit. And as we stand before him by his blood covering, he looks at us and sees holy and righteous and pure because of what he did. That's what's changed, our inner man. That's what happened with these three this morning. Amen? Amen. But I was still bad habit guy. I cussed with every other word. And I remember uh, I went to church or tried to. Couldn't find a church, and then I found a little church, and I knew right then and there, they don't believe like I was raised, but I, I, I went there just to kind of try to go, and then Monday, I showed up to church, first guy that got on my nerves, I cussed him out, and I remember my heart sunk, and I thought, what, what, I'm, I'm that same guy, but I began to stumble forward, and God gave me a crazy desire for his word, and I began to devour it. I began to just read it night and day. And I'll never forget, shortly after that, I went to a Bible study, or, and, I, and I found this little book, the one that I give to everybody. Amen? God's promises. And I started reading that book every day. It's nothing but scriptures. And I started memorizing scriptures. Little did I know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I began to pick out things, or the Holy Spirit picked out things that, that I knew I was violating horrible, like cursing. And I began to memorize scriptures about cursing, about not letting evil or ungodliness come out of my mouth, about not cursing. And when that would start to come up, I began to just quote it out loud, and God changed me changed me and the man that spoke a curse word every other word all of a sudden nothing of the, but godly love you understand what i'm saying we're changed by obedience you're clean through the words that i've spoken unto you as we begin to do what he says you hear what i'm saying god changed me i quit the job they offered me much more money we went back and looked at my social security numbers i'm not lying to try to review, and I made 159 grand reported income my last year. I was making really big money. They offered me 50 grand more to stay in Florida. How many know the enemy will do that? Don't let, don't let the flesh tell you that's God. Oh, he's blessing me. He don't want me to stay. Lie. I'll give you the whole world, Jesus, if you'll fall down and worship me. I'm not saying blessings not of God. It is. But be careful, because the deceiver uses it as well. You hear what I'm saying? Be careful. I quit the job. I came back determined to fix my marriage and fix my family. And, change. and you know what? The family thing, restored. The marriage, no. Because how many know it also takes two? Amen? I'm not blaming my ex. I'm just saying she was done. And God bless her. She's living with a man now or married to a man. They read the word. My heart is for her to be in heaven with all of us. That's all. I just wish God's blessing. You hear what I'm saying? Through all that, God broke me down to nothing. This man that was high and mighty and had all these men, yes, sir, no, sir. Pretty soon I was living in a little teeny 10 by 10 room with nothing, Steve. All my finances were tied up. 
I didn't have even enough money to hire a lawyer to fight the divorce or my kids' situation. I was broken. In fact, my sister came to me during that time. I had 20, 30 grand set into the bank like it was nothing. I had nothing. I couldn't even hire a lawyer. They're winning everything because I can't even file a motion. I can't even do anything, Steve. They came to me broken and said, here's $1,000. Go get a lawyer. I'll never forget. I went to Albany and I hired that lawyer and I said, listen to me. You will not attack my ex. You will not try to find dirt on her. You will not do anything but what I tell you to do. This is what I want to do. I'm more than willing to pay her whatever she needs. I'm more than willing to give her the house. I'm more than willing to, amen? Not the normal talk with the lawyer. He said, but dude, we can, and she's right now probably living in adultery and she's drinking around the kid and we can do this and do that. I said, no. When it was all said and done, amen? My child support went from three grand a month. That's what I was stuck with originally. Three grand a month in 2001. How many believe we can't function on that when we don't even have a job? When it was all settled, it was twelve fifty, And God just worked things out. And through all that, my kids came to live with me. They've been missionaries. My son's sitting here with his daughter. They love the Lord. They're plugged into church. My kids are living. You understand? God changed that family and brought peace and joy and love. And he changed this man. Amen. In 2008, 9, 10, I'm at assembly. And all of a sudden, this pastor there starts seeing something in me. Something that I didn't see. He asked me if I'd help out with teaching in the fireside room. What? Small group. 12, 15 people maybe on a big Sunday. And through that, God began to work. And then Elmer got sick. I'm not saying God made Elmer sick. God knew he was going to be sick. And he asked me if I would start preaching in the big room. There was like sometimes 70 people in there, 40, 50. At that was a big group. And they were people who had been Christians for 40 years. I've been a Christian for a handful of years. But pastor began to help me see my call. And eventually one day, I was seeking God. Crying out to God, Lord, what do you want? What do you want? But you know what I'd never done, Bill? I'd never said, Lord, whatever you want, I'll do it in a minute. Never once. See, what we do is we say, Lord God, I'll give you this. But this is all because I'm holding on to this. I challenge you all. You want to be used by God to affect the world? Give him all, Samuel. Holding nothing back. If we'll seek him with our whole heart, that's when we'll find him. He's a reward of those that diligently seek him. What's the best reward? Partnering with him to change the world. You hear me? One day I began to pray different. Lord God, whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. In 2010, I'm sleeping, and at 4 o'clock exactly, I looked over, and I was wide awake, and the Lord said, start a church. And I said, Lord, I, I don't know nothing about running churches. He said, that's exactly what I'm asking you. <laughs> you see, you've ran a business for 30 years. Live within your means. He talked to me about finances more than anything at the start. How many know it's important to God what we do with our finances? See, most people volunteer, but as soon as you point at the wallet, because uh, where the treasure is, the heart is also. Amen? He said, never forget, live within your means what I provide. Amen? Too many churches are building these big old fancy buildings and they're not putting any money into ministry. Live within your means. And if I tell you to give it all, give it all. It's mine. And I said, all right, Lord. And I asked him for a caveat. I said, Lord, I believe you. 
And people say, oh, we don't fleece the Lord anymore. You, 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 whatever you want to believe. I know this. He doesn't give a sign to proud Pharisees that are saying, show us a sign. But if, Bill, your heart is to know God's will, listen, he will give you all kinds of signs if you'll pay attention. If that's his heart. He loves to confirm his word. I said, God, I don't want to miss you, TJ. So, Lord God, I asked you to give me 10 grand. At the time, we didn't have a lot. 10 grand within a month. And I said, I promise you, Lord, I'll use it, Robert, to start the ministry. And he said, all right. I knew it. And I got up. My wife's getting her hair done. She's working, getting ready for she still gets up at 4.30 every morning. And I said, God wants us to start a church. And he's going to give us 10 grand within a month to start it. And she looked at me and went, hmm, sounds like God. Uh, uh, seriously. Molly had lived with me long enough. She was like, I know this crazy man. This is the real story. The next day, I was working with a backslidden missionary. And I told him what God had done and what he'd said. And I'll never forget it. He said, dude, you're crazy. You've been crazy. I worked with you for a long time. But God doesn't talk to men anymore. Not like that. I said, I can't vouch for anybody else, but I can tell you he talked to me. Listen, three weeks later, we get a phone call from Southern California. Grandma Nani had been up. She was doing great. She was traveling going to Rome and you know, cruising. She was not sick. She took a couple steps and had a stroke. Am I saying God killed Grandma Nani? No. I'm saying he knew she was going to pass. And they called us and said, you know what's crazy? Nobody knew this, but she had bought Safeway stock years ago. And when they were liquidating stuff, she's a millionaire. And this is what's really weird. She left 10 grand to every one of the siblings grandchildren. Molly, you're going to get 10 grand. God is my witness. That's what happened. I went to work that next day and I told this backslidden missionary what God did. And he looked at me, John, and he said, you could have thrown 50 scriptures at me and we would have argued until the end of work, but you told me God spoke to you and I saw it happen. God's still speaking. We got to listen to him. And be quick to obey. When we opened the church, shortly after that, his whole family was sitting on the church row. God had changed that man in his heart. He had shown him he's still on the throne. Still doing what he says. And he's still speaking today. And a while back, it started over a year ago, God began to speak into my heart. And he said, Rick, you're an evangelist that's been doing the work of a pastor. He called Timothy as a pastor to do the work of an evangelist because it was needed. But he said, now, as time's short, I need you to really go full tilt. How many can tell I got a little evangelist in me? I'm not saying that. I'm saying I got to follow what he says. You hear me? So do you. I want to share a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is say thank you. To the leadership and the elders. The title of this little mini is, May the Lord Receive All the Glory. If you've heard me time and time and time again, people have said, Pastor, thank you. Pastor, that was great. Pastor this, Pastor that. What do I say, Vicki? What do I say? May he receive all glory. Deflect. Deflect. As we, I just want to thank Pastor David and Mary. For 14 years of tears and prayer. <laughs> Faithful service. Faithful service. They have given of their finances and their blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you. I want to thank Michael and Danielle and fam. Amen? Come on. Come on. For all their work. For all their work. I want to thank Robert and Lori for all their work. Hardest working couple in the church. And I say that. Listen, 
Lori and them have been every, every Wednesday. They pushed us into doing the online stuff. Sometimes, often, we have more online than we do. Is that in here? There'll be Wednesday nights, there'll be 40 viewing. And only 10 or 15 maybe sitting in the seats. Thank God for amazing people. I want to thank you, all of you, for setting up, for tearing down, for hitting the streets, for bringing families, for supporting us through prayer and worship and financially for all these years. Amen. May you receive the reward for your works. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Yes, God be glorified. I want to thank you for that. Thank you. John 15, 8 says, this is Jesus talking. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. Amen. Bear much fruit. I want to remind us about just a little bit of fruit that's come forth from this call and us stepping out. Before COVID, we broke 100 many times. So if we just average 40 per Sunday, and I'm being really conservative, Lori, just 40 throughout the 14 years, probably more like 60 or more, just 40, 29,120 bodies came through those doors to worship God yeah. and listen to Scripture. 29,000, that's a bunch of people. If it was just 60, over 43,680 people came into this fellowship. Listen, that's not counting Wednesday nights. That's not counting Tuesday nights. That's just for our main services. Praise his name. During that time, you guys, thank you, listened to 728 sermons. That's a lot of Pastor Rick and Pastor David and Pastor Johnny and Hahnemann, Pastor Hahnemann and many others. But that's a lot of sermons. 728. Mary and David, I know David probably sat through most of those. Or pre <laughs> That's a lot of sermons, man. He got to hear the same thing repeated a few times. 644 midweek services, Bible studies. Not even counting the women's Bible studies. Praise the Lord. Over the last nine years, I'm sorry, we used QuickBooks at the start, and we used QuickBooks at the end, but my old version of QuickBooks, I could not pull it up on the new computer no matter what I did. Part of it's probably me, but I only started a few days ago trying to get all the numbers. But, so I can't give you the exact numbers, but I can give you from nine years back, okay? Listen to these numbers. Just over the last nine years, $227,447 went to missions and local ministry. That's almost a quarter of a million. $227,000 just last nine years went to missions and ministry local. And that, that's codes for kids and meals and huge amounts that went to support missions all around the world. Praise the Lord God. Amen. That's an average of $25,271 a year. That's over two grand a month Amen. from this little church. Do you know the other day, Living Water Tracks called me? They called me on the phone. Because we go through so many tracks, he just wanted to admonish us. He said, you guys must be having, you must have a huge fellowship there. I said, no. I think right now we're running 40, 50. And he said, you're giving more tracks than most of the mega churches we deal with. I said, yeah. Because that's what happens, right? When God gets a hold of the sheep, they want to go begut other sheep, right? They, they want to affect other sheep. And I'm not picking on mega churches. I'm saying, thank God for Vicki and Danette and Steve and other, Danielle and many others. Amen? You guys are out hitting the streets. And God is using you to affect people for Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. All of you. Thank you. God, by his grace, we baptized over 60 people right here at New Beginning Fellowship. It's actually, I believe, more than that, but I was having a hard time accessing the old data 
So I know I didn't want to exaggerate because God doesn't bless exaggeration. You know, there's actually a term, evangelizing. Uh, uh, evangel last, uh, I can't remember. You know, it's, evangelists are known for exaggerating. And God can't bless exaggeration. 60 plus. I also know on top of that, during COVID, we started three churches in India, and they baptized more than 60 people. So praise God, 120 plus have been baptized. You know how many churches go for years without one person coming to Christ? I say that for his glory. Thank you for your prayers, for your hearts. Okay, We started again three churches in India that have done well. We've also hosted 40 potlucks. If, when you're going to see that at the end, he's going to post some pictures. I want you to see that. I know it's 12 o'clock, but for one service, can we go a couple minutes over? For just one service, okay? 12 women's retreats, 12 men's retreats, amen? 12 staff retreats. Um, if we just average eight kids a Sunday, which I believe is being real conservative, that's 5,824 kids that came through that box. <laughs> Praise his name. Praise his name. And that's not counting 11 VBSs. Praise the Lord. Where we watch little ones come to Christ. Amen. We've had park services, park outreaches. Um, we've even done a few park weddings. God has just been amazing. We've been able to share the gospel with people that have given their heart to Christ right here. And then days later have gone on to be with Jesus. You remember Ethan? Ethan, was it Ethan? The guy you brought and he died very shortly later. Elliot, I'm sorry. He gave his heart to Christ and very shortly after that got hit by a train in Albany. Robert sat right back here and just shortly after that died. Went to be with Jesus. I mean, I was just thinking about Michael Moynihan. Did I share this already? Because you know what? We were in an emergency room. That's what God called us to be. Can't tell you how many stories I've had. I remember Michael shared me about a story. He was filling up with gas in Redmond. And some guy came out and told you, tell Pastor Rick. Right? You were talking to I think it was you. You were getting gas. And some guy... He went to give him a track. He was going to hand him a track. I think maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was somebody else. But they said they went to hand a track. Are you with Pastor Rick? <laughs> they recognized the track. He said, tell him I plugged into a church and I'm moving forward in God. Amen. Michael Moynihan, I sent him a text. He was going to come and be a part of this. But you know what he said? Thank you, Pastor Rick. It was a dark, horrible place. I was a drug addict. You guys got a hold of me. By God's grace, God changed me. And I'm part of the church here in Newport, living for Jesus, right? Yeah. Praise God, it started right here. Time and time and time and time again. As we go, I want you to know something. Listen, God still wants you to keep producing fruit. Two scriptures, two scriptures. 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 16. Look at it. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Next slide. Till I come, give attention to reading and exhortation to doctrine. Next slide. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands. Meditate on these things and give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Look at the next slide. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. Amen. You want to affect your family? You want to affect your family for Jesus? Light yourself on fire. Live before them. Live. Live before them. And it will affect them. They'll affect him. And the last scripture I'm going to read is this. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 5. I just want us to realize the Macedonian church was who he's talking to. This is Paul. He said they first gave themselves to the Lord. And then they gave themselves to us. Listen. 
If there's anything I've ever taught, this is it. Every day, get in your word. Listen, learn how to rightly divide it. Pray it in and walk it out. Pray it in and walk it out. Give yourself to the Lord. And then give yourself to the ministry. Whatever church God plants you in, make sure they're a Bible-leaving church. They love the Lord. Amen? And it's the one he wants you to be in. Listen, give yourself to the ministry. They first gave themselves to the Lord. And then they give themselves to us. Listen, I didn't teach you to hold down a bench. Get out there and stir it up for Jesus. Time is short, and we must be about our Father's work. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? All right. Take that with you. Now, listen. It's only five after. You can hold on for just a couple minutes. I know there's a couple of you for sure that want to share about how the Lord God... I did enough preaching, but, but let's, let's share about what God's done through this church. So a couple things I wanted to share with you is to encourage all of you guys to vote in November. It's very important because our vote just doesn't stop at the poll. And we need, right now we're able to walk in freedom and have the liberty to get in our Bibles at any given time. So I encourage you to vote. And the second thing is... God's done a lot in my life. I could be up here for all day and just talk about all the greatness that he's done for me. But one of the things I would like to leave and encourage each and every one of you is engage, take hold of the life that Jesus suffered and died for each and every one of us. God bless you. I love you. And all, all the glory to God. You know, without him, you know, we have nothing. You know, I, I do an outreach, and anybody that wants to come and get involved, contact Pastor. I would love to have you come along with us. It's all, it's all him. Wow, that's my last good morning. Um, here in this building. I'm one of those people that Rick's mentioned from the pulpit that's like kind of sad about this because you're all my family. you all my family. I've been here since, what, about 10 months after the doors opened, my husband and I. But we ask why. I remember Pastor Hahnemann recently giving us a speech that we need to watch our whys that they don't become whines. <laughs> I remember this. And he, he, I remember going up and talking to him. But going back to the whys, it seemed like 100 years ago, a friend of mine who was very young said, you should drive a school bus. I was not a Christian, so I told her where to go. So fast forward, fast forward a little longer, I started driving a school bus. And I met this beautiful young lady by the name of Rebecca Thompson whose mom has admittedly asked, why is my child born with cerebral palsy? Why is she like this? Well, maybe it's not all about one person or one group, but because I worked with Rebecca Thompson, Rick Pruitt is a chihuahua in the morning, and I'm more of a basset hound in the morning. So, and I love this man. I, don't, I, don't, I might joke about this, but I'm not much of a morning person, and Rebecca got on a bus very early. And every morning, Rick would bounce out with her. Hey, I'm starting up a new church. You should come. Now, I distinctly remember going to church for Bibles, kids' church, but I don't remember living a Christian life in my home growing up. But I do remember going to Sunday school. No, I'm good, Rick, thanks. No, I'm all right. I don't, no, I'm okay. No, don't worry about it. I'm fine. Repeatedly, I told the man, no. How many in the room can say that they told the man, no, nah, I'm all right. I think more than one of us can probably say that. So one morning I had it out with the Lord, and I'm like, fine, God, you want me to go to East Church? You're going to wake me up without an alarm clock, and you're going to have me ready to go. Church starts at 1030. I was up at 7. So I came, and my husband and I, and we brought our children. 
We have been here almost every single Sunday from that morning. We have met and loved and grown to care deeply for each and every one of you. And in our lives, much like the weather, sometimes the changing of the seasons can be difficult. When spring turns to summer, we start complaining about the heat. Oh, it's too hot. It's too hot, but then somebody shows us air conditioning or a fan. When summer turns to fall, we complain about, I have to rake the leaves, the air is too crisp, and why is there pumpkin spice lattes? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then fall turns to winter, and now it's way too cold. But look at that snowfall, how peaceful and serene is that? And then winter turns to spring, and we complain about the rain. It's too wet. I don't like the rain. It's too hard to see. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon tells us that to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. Skipping down a little bit, he says a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And while this season with this group of people is closing out in person, we can still reach out to one another and, make, and please just embrace the next season, even though it's hard. The flowers are going to bloom. The snow is going to fall. And we can always just make that one last phone call. If you really have to go, you know, there's the door. I mean that in a nice way. But just a couple more minutes. I just want to say, um, you guys are like the world to me as much as like, you guys have been there for me and been faithful and believed in me through all my everything, my ups and my downs. You've seen me at my worst. You've seen me at my best. And you never gave up on me. <laughs> and, um, I'm, and it's just like, whoa, you know? We're not going to be together every Sunday, and I know I haven't been here, but um, I just want to say thank you for never giving up on me, because we love you. Yeah. We love you. Praise the Lord. All his glory. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, guys look so good. Um. I remember when it was like COVID time and um, I COVID cured me of just, you know, like sometimes you got to wake up early, go to church or something, you know, like, but gosh, I'm really going to miss all you guys. Okay. So um, I was praying and talking to God about finding a... <clears throat> Finding a, finding a, a verse because, um, what do you say, you know, what do you say, you know, and, um, you guys, you guys gave your heart to the Lord and it just, it reminded me of, um, we're like a family and, uh, I thought of, um, Matthew nineteen twenty nine, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or a wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. And I was just thinking about how, you know, we're like a family, you know, and, you know, I, I, I know that God is going to bless your ministry and we're all going to go where God is going to send us. And, you know, in, in one sense, you know, we're kind of leaving each other, but we're, we're following after the Lord. And, and uh, we all get each other back. You know, there's, there's a bigger family, you know, that we're all a part of. And um, like what Lori was saying, um, you know, it's all, God's got that big picture. Um, so I love you all so much. Thank you, Pastor Rick and Molly, you know, you guys. Uh, I mean, it, oh, Dave and Mary, all those years living next door to me. Uh, Mary, I used to come over to your house like every day and just talk to you, like um, whether you wanted me to or not. Um, I mean, like you guys, 
you guys probably all know Mary's very patient woman, but boy, yeah, um, I just love you all so much. Thank you. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish and have eternal life. Amen. Out of the mouths of babe. All right. We got time for one or two more. David, why don't you guys come and let's do one last song together. Steve, come on, brother. Come on. Wow, <laughs> look at all the people here today. <laughs> um, I lose track of time. It's been several years now. I followed uh, Harvey and Jean over here from Albany. And uh, I hope you see a grown man cry. But uh, this has been kind of my refuge here. Uh, everybody knows what the world is like. And uh, for quite a few Sundays now, I've been coming here. And it gives me uh, peace, and it's something I need. I needed, so I'm going to miss it a lot. And uh, I'm sure I'll find another place. But just want to know how how much I love everybody here. And before I leave today, anybody wants my phone numbers? Um, I'll give it to them, and you find yourself in Albany, you need some help, you can call on me, you need some prayer, you can call on me. But um, for the second part of this is for, I guess, like two or three years now, I've listened to Pastor Rick every day, every Sunday, so you want to get up and share something, and I'm kind of a loner, I don't open up to people too much, so... I sat here for several years not sharing what I'm going to share with you today, but uh, there was a time that I was so heartbroken and I was having physical heart problems and I was sitting there just broken both physically and mentally and I mean uh, you know, I was just broken. My heart was hurting physically and from heartache. And I was sitting there and I could actually feel my heart pounding. And it was pounding so hard I could hear it. And I, I was talking to the Lord. I said, okay, Lord. I said, I, I, I'm ready as I'm going to get. And I thought that was going to be it. And I was telling him that, you know, my heart is done physically and I'm heartbroken. I've lost all my family. Uh, the women I loved in my life seemed to want to take my money and go away. And I was just broken. And when Pastor, you know, I've always wondered all my life why God couldn't talk to me like I talked to you face to face. But, you know, it's, I realize God's been talking to me my entire life. But I heard these words, and this is the real as I've ever heard it. He says, that's how I felt about you. And he didn't let me die that day, so all I'm saying is God bless you guys. And I'm here for all, every one of you if you need me. So, you know. Right, last one. Um, I don't know if really knows me, but um, I just want to thank you, Mary. Mary, a pastor, and Molly, and Kathy, and some of you guys for praying for me, for my family. And just for everything, I just appreciate you guys, and I love you guys.
let's go ahead and stand and sing one more time together. Did you feel?
God, we just thank you for this time, Father God, that we can come together as one. And just like this song says, God, let the doors open and let us just share the gospel of Jesus Christ that flows out of us with everyone we can in our lifestyle, anyone we come in contact, Father God. This church doesn't stop here, but it grows out and it reaches other people for you, Father God. God bless everyone here this morning and keep them safe throughout the, the journey of this next chapter that we're about ready to enter, Father God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And I just want to add one more thing to that. This has been kind of a life verse for me for a long time. So I would just encourage us to take everything we've learned here and do what Matthew 28, 16 says. This is great commission. This is our job. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So here's the thing right here. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen? Amen. Love you guys. Thank you again. If you can help us one last time, put away chairs. We'd love it and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All the glory go to God.